Hey, good morning from Idaho. That's right. Uh, Ozark Tim is in Idaho, and I'm staring at a sunrise over the Grand Tetons. So I don't know if you can see it well, but I'll just sort of pan around there. And there's the Grand Tetons. Those are the three people always think of when they think of the Grand Teton National Park. But as I swing around here, we're in this uh, little almost like a meadow surrounded with maybe cottonwood trees and aspens and a few uh, evergreens. And uh, way, 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 way down there at the end of this road is that little cabin and that's where we're staying at. Um, in this very private uh, area near Tetonia, Idaho, which is on the Idaho side of Grand Teton National Park, and Driggs. Driggs is not very far from here. I originally had planned to stay in a tiny home in Driggs, but at the last minute, I don't know what the problem was, but it got canceled on me. That's never happened with Airbnb. But I was fortunately actually able to find a much better place here in this little very secluded location um, with a beautiful view out our window. It's an Airbnb. So if you want to know where this is at, let me know. I'll give you the link to the Airbnb. But it was a very reasonable price. And uh, we drove here from West Yellowstone yesterday. But um, we plan to go to Jackson this morning and into the park and probably do a little bike riding along this nice asphalt trail that parallels the Teton Range. But um, as I often do when I take these little strolls, you know, I kind of reflect on things, uh, maybe philosophically or religiously or kingdom wise and um, as many of you know part of this uh, trip well there's a couple several components of this trip that we took the six-week odyssey which we're kind of in the last chapter of it right now uh, one was to celebrate our 40th wedding anniversary and uh, that's no small feat these days to make it 40 years and uh, after what we've been through the last couple of years it was especially <laughs> nice to celebrate that um, the other thing is just to reconnect with some of our beautiful favorite places in the West, uh, back in Oregon, where we come from, and um, uh, here in the mountains, here in Montana, which I spent a great deal of my childhood um, in Wyoming and Montana, the Tetons, Yellowstone, Cook City, uh, the area around Big Timber, Melville, the ranch. So we were able to connect with people from all the way to the Pacific Coast here to Montana. We recently spent time spreading my mother's ashes. She died in February of 2021. And um, I had some ashes and most of them I put placed on the ranch near this rock where our Norwegian immigrant um, family had uh, carved a steamship uh, that they came over on from Norway. and. Up to eight people now, including my mom, are have their remains there. And uh, then we decided to finish off our trip here in uh, near the Grand Tetons. And I, I'm glad we did because it's, I think this is the best view of all the places we've been to so far. Uh, I woke up this morning and to my, um, to my right, I heard wolves howling. And I knew they weren't coyotes because coyotes have more of a yip kind of to their howling. And I wasn't hearing any yips but more of a deep, long howl that you hear from wolves. And um, I was thinking about that. And then my wife just told me that she read that people saw moose in the behind the little cabin we're staying in. So that was interesting because you don't want to run into one of those and surprise them because they can do damage to you. And then, of course, I saw two cans of bear spray like this one hanging on the hooks that hold the coats and I thought oh I wonder what that means <laughs> so I took some along with me just in case it was either that or my revolver and I, I probably <laughs> I'm probably better off having this with me so but anyway I was thinking about God's coming kingdom because that that's all that's what floats my boat those of you who watch my channel you know that I love talking about the promise of the resurrection and um in the coming kingdom on earth, you know, because the meek inherit the earth and read Psalm 37, you'll see how often that is said. And um, 
you know, I was thinking a couple things have come to mind. Uh, the first of which occurred to me as I was placing ashes um, in this hole that my cousin dug near the rock several days ago. And just, you know, that whole dust to dust, ashes to ashes, that our bodies are composed of chemicals found on the earth. And um, in Genesis, it says God created Adam out of the earth and then he breathed his breath into man and that's what animated the chemicals basically that composed this hunk of clay and it says that man became a living soul not that he had a living soul you could read it for yourself in Genesis but man became a living soul or a living being or a living creature um and uh, so anyway, I've been thinking about that, just mortality in general and how how our lives just go by so fast. And, you know, spending time with people I've known for quite some time from my youth and my cousin James and his wife Diana and Kenny and Kathy and Kai, my cousins Kai and Carrie and other people, cousin Mark and Mana and all of these people, you know, we've all been through so many different things in our lives and, you know, we're changing. We don't look like we did when we were 14, 15, and uh, I certainly don't. Uh, and, uh, you know, time goes by. I was just thinking about that. And, and just again, as I placed those ashes in that hole and I thought, my only hope, my only hope is through resurrection. It's through the proclaimed truth that was so contrary to what the Greek people or of Paul's time and Jesus's time thought. They just could not fathom that you would come back to life in a body. I mean, and that's, that's what Jesus did. And that's what John, the apostle John emphasizes so much. We touched him. We had fish with him. He has a, he has a uh, new and revised uh, digestive system. He wasn't a ghost. His, you know, hey, Thomas, go ahead, stick your finger in my side, see that I'm alive. You know, all of these reminders that resurrection involves a new body, you know, one that will be imperishable and will be death proof. I mean, that is so exciting. Uh, but anyway, I, <clears throat> that, that hope, that, that dual reality of uh, mortality that's real, you know, the wages of sin is death. It's still death. It's still death. You don't get out of it. It's still death. No one gets out of it, no matter how hard they try. And then just the hope of the resurrection. The other thing I thought about was that wonderful promise. Um, well, well, let me back up. In Romans 8, Paul talks about how this creation, this creation that I'm walking around in right now, those wolves that I'm heard howling this morning, the some kind of bird or crane or something that I hear right now chuckling kind of. These mountains that you see there, the Grand Tetons, the creation itself is groaning and it's groaning for the revelation of the sons of God. And if you do scripture, a study of scripture, you'll understand that's not just some kind of, you know, like a son, like through a sexual relations between a man and a woman, the, a son or a daughter. It's, it's really talking about rulers. It, the, the revelation is groaning to be released from its bondage to sin and corruption. And it's groaning for the revelation or the revealing of the sons of God. And why? Why, why, would, it, why would it be waiting for that? Because when you read in scripture, you realize that when when God's people are resurrected and Jesus comes back, he's going to rule and reign on this earth. He's going to put things right. He's going to stamp out death. He's going to stamp out all of God's enemies. And I don't know all the things we're going to be doing. Uh, you know, we might be involved in agriculture. We might be involved in, um, you know, helping to husband the animals. Uh, we might be... Uh, involved in um, community actions of some sort. I mean, I I has not seen, ear has not heard. We don't know all the wonderful things, but I'll tell you what, it's going to be way better than it is now in this, as what Paul 
characterizes this present evil age in Galatians. That's how he characterizes this age before Christ returns. And uh, one of the things that's cool about that, I thought about this when I was at the Grizzly and Wolf Center uh, yesterday in West Yellowstone when we saw these this huge grizzly bear um, looking around for stuff that this guy had put out for him to sniff around for. And he looks so tame and calm. But then I read in the paper about some fisherman or hunter that was mauled by a grizzly bear. So you know that behind that little cuddly teddy bear looking giant is can be this ferocious beast that can rip your head off and, you know, sink its claws in, into you, hence the bear spray. Uh, and then I saw the wolves, you know, and wolves, uh, they look like dogs with long legs to me, like German shepherds with long legs. And they were there just kind of staring at you, you know, through the glass intently. And you know, I, I read about a story last summer about someone who was drug out of a tent by a wolf. So you know that if they're working in a pack and they're hungry enough, they will come for you. Uh, it doesn't happen often, of course, you know, they're skittish. We all know that, you know, more, I know more people are struck by lightning and more people die of heart attack and more people die <clears throat> of, um, you know, car accidents than shark attacks and bear attacks and wolf attacks. I know that, but still the, the terror of it, you know, is still, you're, you're kind of thinking about that. You know, the idea of you, you know, you're not at the top of the food chain. You are part of the food chain. But anyway, in Isaiah, <clears throat> it talks about when God sets up his kingdom on the earth, you know, because the meek inherit the earth. He, the animals <clears throat> are going to start acting like they originally were with man, you know, in the, in the Garden of Eden days before sin entered and corruption entered and the stuff that would make creation groan over entered, you know, that that the the wolf it says the wolf is going to lay down with the lamb so the predator of the prey is going to they're going to be cool with one another and a little child will be able to stick his hand down into an i think it's an adder is the snake that's described he's going to be able to put his hand in the hole of an adder and come out um smiling like no no problem no venomous bite no uh, you know arm that swells up and turns black no need for anything. Oh, I'm seeing a deer up there, I think. Can you see it? Can you see him on the road there crossing? Yeah, that's cool. That's my first um, animal. Oh, by the way, <laughs> speaking of scary beasts, we were driving out of West Yellowstone, or no, out of Cook City the other day, and my wife and I said, hey, let's have a contest to see who spots the first animal in Yellowstone Park. And I looked down at my leg and there was this giant beetle about two, maybe an inch or two long. He was on my leg. He was like crawling toward my crotch. And I didn't want to say anything because I knew she would freak out. And then that would make driving even more difficult. <laughs> so I finally said, hey, look down toward my leg. And I had these black slacks on or Levi's. So it, he blended the black bug blended in with it. But yeah needless to say my wife was surprised and i and i didn't like the idea of a bug that big crawling toward my crotch so we and there was no turnout there, i mean there's a lot of turnouts in yellowstone park but during this specific specific stretch there were no turnouts and um anyway make a long story short we we finally call all of us finally calmed down and we um eventually got the bug out of the car, but that was the first animal we saw in Yellowstone Park. But you know, what's cool about the Bible is it promises that when God's resurrected people come back with him, with Jesus, to set up his kingdom, and, and the Bible clearly states that his people, his overcomers, his resurrected believing people, they will rule with him. He, he actually talks about shared rule. Read the letters to the, uh, to the seven churches and the gospels also. And those promises at the end to the churches, to the people in the churches who overcome. They're going to rule with Christ. He, he said he's going to share his throne. He, he, he quotes uh, Psalm 2 and then he basically includes his people in that rule. It's exciting. I mean, to think about that. 
Uh, you know, and I think we'll have the capacity to rule. I think ruling kind of scares people because they think of ruling uh, corrupt and disobedient and rebellious people, but all rebellion is gonna be put down. So that's the encouraging thing. It'll be easier to rule. But uh, anyway, those are my two thoughts as I'm walking around here, hearing wolves to my right and wondering if I'm gonna run into any beast beside a deer. Uh, but yeah, just the idea of mortality, but also the idea, the, the hope of resurrection and of coming to this earth, which the meek inherit, they don't inherit heaven, they inherit the earth, and ruling and reigning with Christ. This is terra firma, terra cognito, you know, the earth that we know. This is what we were made for. This is what, this is what Adam was made for. The earth is called, called God's footstool. The new Jerusalem, the city God is preparing for his people, it's coming down. Read the end of Revelation. It's coming down to this planet. It is. We are not going up to some place where we're ghosts playing harps uh, with wings or anything like that. Uh, we're going to rule. Um, God and his angels are going to put down all rebellion. I would not want to be on the enemy list of God when he unleashes his wrath and and uh, tells his son to head to the earth to set up his government. The government's gonna be on his shoulder. He's the wonderful counselor uh, and all of those wonderful things you read in Isaiah 9, I think, that we sing at Christmas time. If you've ever been part of a Handel's Messiah, there's, <laughs> that's, that's great. It's got all this scripture in it. But anyway, <coughs> that's all for now. Just uh, hope reality of mortality and uh just the thought that animals are not going to scare us anymore that we're we're going to be just like adam was a partner we're, we're not going to scare them they're going to they're not they're not going to scare us harmony is going to be the watchword and uh, all enemies of him and his people will be put under his feet malachi 4 read read that you'll be happy little calves uh, leaping with joy is how we're described in Malachi 4. So anyway, that's all for now. Um, Ozark Tim here in the Tetons trying to work out his back a little bit by walking and uh, just enjoying the beauty of God's creation. All right. Auf Wiedersehen.